In a previous video, I demonstrated the installation of the GNS3 GUI. In this video, I want to show you how to integrate the GUI with a local GNS3 VM. In this example, I'm using GNS3 1.5.3. The integration process is very similar for other releases of GNS3 1.5. So the first thing you're going to do is go to the GNS3 website and click download. You need to log in with your account. So I'm going to log in with my credentials. We then have the option to download the GNS3 GUI. Now I've done that already. That portion of the software is already installed and running in Windows. So I'm going to click the link download the GNS3 VM. That takes us to the documentation page. And we're going to go to GitHub to download the GNS3 VM. Now you need to make sure that you download the correct release for the version that you're using. So in this example, you can see that I'm using GNS3 1.5.3. So on the GitHub page, we need to download the GNS3 VM. And we have a few options. We can either download the VirtualBox release, ESXi, or VMware Workstation. In my example, I'm using VMware Workstation. So that's the version that I'm going to download. Now that implies that you've got a VMware Workstation. So go to VMware.com. Under Downloads, either select Workstation Pro or Workstation Player. Workstation Player is free. Workstation Pro is paid software, but you can download a trial version of the software. So that's what I'm going to do here. So the software is now downloaded. Here's the GNS3 VM. This is a zip file, so you need to extract it. So I'm going to select Extract All and extract the file to the downloads directory. The zip file contains an OVA that we need to import into VMware Workstation or VirtualBox if that's what you're using. Here's the download for VMware Workstation, so I'm going to double click on that. Say yes to install. And I'm simply going to go through the wizard and accept all the default values. So leave all options at defaults. I won't check, however, for product updates and I won't help improve the software. And apart from that, I'm just going to take the defaults and install VMware Workstation. VMware Workstation installs various drivers and other core components to allow the software to function. Once the install process has finished, click Finish, and then Start VMware Workstation. Enter your license key or start a trial for 30 days. I'm going to say Yes to allow it to make changes to the PC, and click Finish. VMware Workstation has started up. So what I'm going to do now is click File Open, go to my Downloads directory, open the GNS3 VM folder, and select the GNS3 VM. Now this is important. The name needs to be GNS3 VM. Don't change the name. You can change where it's installed. I'm going to leave that at the default, but ensure that the name is GNS3 VM. Now, if you've imported the GNS3 VM previously, you may encounter issues, so delete that previous GNS3 VM and make sure that this is the only one that you've got on your PC. So I'm going to click Import. That then imports the OVA into VMware. Now, the GNS3 OVA sets some default values. You can just leave those as they are and go back to the GNS3 GUI. Now the easiest way to do the integration is to go to Help, Setup Wizard, and then select Local GNS3 VM and click Next. You need to select your virtualization software. We're going to use VMware, which is the recommended software for QMU-based appliances such as iOS V and iOS V Layer 2. It's essentially the best software to use, so rather use Workstation Player or Workstation Pro if you can. Now it's picked up the GNS3 VM available in VMware Workstation. 
you can now specify the number of virtual cores and amount of RAM that you're going to allocate to the GNS3 VM. Now this really depends on the size of the topologies that you want to create in GNS3. So I'm going to set my CPU cores to 2 and my RAM to 4 gig and click next. The GNS3 GUI then contacts the GNS3 VM and boots it up. So as you can see here, the GNS3 VM is automatically booting up. And while that's happening, the GUI shows us that it's starting the GNS3 VM. So the VM is now booting up. We get a message that it's booted up successfully. And back in the GUI now, we can decide what kind of virtual machines we're going to add. So we can either add an iOS router using a real iOS image or use other options. I'll select a real iOS image and click finish. We now have a new wizard allowing us to either run the iOS on the GNS3 VM or on the local router. We're going to go for the VM and click next. We then need to browse to where we've stored the iOS image. Now GNS3 is not able to give you iOS images. You have to provide these yourself. So please don't ask me or GNS3 to provide you with an iOS. In this example, I'm going to select a C3725 image and click open. We then asked whether we want to decompress the image. It's a good idea to do this because the router boots up quicker. So I'm going to say yes. GNS3 then decompresses the image and uploads it to the GNS3 VM. I'm going to click next. You need to name your router. So I'm going to call this C3725 hyphen VM because it's running on the GNS3 VM. I'm then going to click next. Now this is important. You should check the minimum and maximum RAM that your release requires. So when you click this link, you're taken to the Cisco Feature Navigator. You can paste your image name in and click Search for Images. And this tells you the amount of RAM required to run that image. So by default, GNS3 has chosen 128 meg. That's too little. My image requires 256 meg. So I'm going to change that and click Next. Now this depends on the router platform that you're using. In this case, I'm going to select some modules, which then allow me to add some WIC cards to the router. This depends on the image that you've got and the router that you're using. I'm going to click Next. Now this is very important. An idle PC value is required, otherwise your CPU goes to 100%. So GNS3 in this case has selected an idle PC value. If you don't have one selected, use this button, Idle PC Finder, to find one and click Finish. A summary is shown. What's important to note here is my router platform is running on the GNS3 VM. It's not running locally. So I'm going to click OK. So now that that's done, we can build a GNS3 topology by dragging routers to the GNS3 workspace. And I'll zoom in here and I can then connect them via various interfaces. I'll display the labels so we can see how they connected to one another. And then I'll start the routers up. So notice the icons will go green. And then I'll open up a console to both routers. So the routers are booting up. So both routers have booted up. Here's router two, here's router one. So on router one, show version. You can see that this is a C3725 router. So what I could do is go on to the fast Ethernet interface and no shut it. Give it an IP address of something like this. Create a loopback. Something like this. And enable a routing protocol such as EIGRP. So show IP EIGRP interfaces. EIGRP is running on both the loopback and the FOST Ethernet interface. On router 2, no shut the FOST Ethernet interface, give it an IP address. Go on to the loopback, give it an IP address. Enable EIGRP on all interfaces. 
So what should happen now is router 2 should be able to ping router 1, which it can. It should also have learnt about a neighbor, which it has, which means it should have learnt a route, which it has. So it learnt about the loopback from router 1, and it should now be able to ping the loopback of router 1. Router 1 should also be able to ping the loopback of router 2. So that's an example of how to integrate the GNS3 GUI with the GNS3 VM and build a small Cisco topology within GNS3. These routers are running on the GNS3 VM. They're not running on a local install. So they're running on the GNS3 VM, not locally. I hope you found this video useful. If you enjoyed it, please like it and please subscribe to my channel. I wish you all the very best.